Hello my friends, welcome to my corner. We're going to be doing something different today because we're going to be looking at some music and some movies. So if you like those things, you have come to the right place. The first one I'm going to show you, we're going to start with the music, okay? This is Zuropa by U2. I am a big fan of their previous album, Achtung Baby, and I really like Pop, which is the one that came after this one. This one, to be honest with you, was a little bit too experimental for my taste, but there are still some great moments in it, and I really enjoyed it. Now, there's a band that is one of my favorites, and for some reason there were a couple of albums by them that I was missing, so I finally did something about that, and I got a copy first of Dance of Death by Iron Maiden. This is the album that many critics said at the time it was not as good as their other work. I don't know, I listened to it and I really, really liked it. So it's going to be an album that I'm going to come back to. And the other one that I was missing by them that I really wanted to listen to because so many people say it's an amazing album is, of course, A Matter of Life and Death. This one is fantastic. It's one of their best albums. So I highly recommend that one. Then I have here an album that I got from my brother because he got another copy of it. I have no idea what was wrong with this one because I listened to it and I thought it was great. This is Hemispheres by Rush. I am a fan of Rush, but I have to say that I had not listened to one of their actual studio albums. I have those two volumes of Retrospective, their greatest hits. There are a couple of tracks from this one in that, uh, The Trees and La Villa Strangiato, which is their first uh, instrumental track. It's just something to blow your mind. It's more than, let's see, it's actually 9 minutes and 34 seconds long. And most of this album actually has to do with one song that has many parts to it, titled Cygnus X1. And we have book two here. For book one, you have to go to their previous album, which is A Farewell to Kings. So it's a continuation, and it's also something new. Very interesting structure right here, very interesting themes. So I highly recommend this album. I'm going to ask my brother to let me borrow his other Rush albums, because I want to listen to more by them outside of those two retrospective volumes. Then the next thing is an album that I had been wanting to get for a very long time, and that is Layla and Other Assorted love songs by Derek and the Dominoes. This is, you know, good old Eric Clapton here. An album that, when you mention it, most of the time people say, oh yeah, Layla is a really good song. It is a very good song, but there are many good tracks here. It's this great blues music, 14 songs in this album. So I would say, yeah, definitely check it out. There was uh, that Unplugged album by Eric Clapton, and of course he did uh, a new version of Layla, and he also played Nobody Knows You When You're Down and Out. I believe that was the one that he chose for that other album. But those songs are great, but there are also many others. There's also a cover version of Little Wing by uh, Jimi Hendrix, of course. So great, great stuff that you can find right there. The next one I found, uh, actually the next three, I believe. Yes, no, the next four of them. I found at a library sale, so they were quite affordable. I, I think we're talking about 50 cents for each one of those albums. This is Nashville Skyline by Bob Dylan. As you know, a winner of the Nobel Prize in Literature. I really liked it. My brother has a box that I think contains the first six albums by Bob Dylan in mono uh, format. And this is the one that is the first one that is not included in that collection. So I was like, okay, we're missing that one. I think this one is in stereo. But uh, I love this because this is happy Bob Dylan. Okay, so if you're looking for that kind of thing, you know, this one is uh, really good. And it has the song, one of the most famous tracks is Lay Lady Lay. So that one is included here. And I really just enjoyed uh, the listening experience with that one. In a previous video, I showed you an album by Joe Satriani, uh, Surfing with the Alien, that I had got, I, I don't know, if, I think it was my birthday. It was either my birthday or Christmas, because that's what I do. I, I get one book, one uh, CD, and one DVD most of the time. So this time at the library, I found this one, Not of This Earth. And I must say, you know, I, I enjoyed Surfing with the Alien uh, quite a bit more than this one, but this is still a very good album, and it's his debut album, so that's really impressive. The next one that I got was something that, of course, I already had, and I wanted to have an extra copy of Ramones Mania. This was one of the first Ramones albums that I bought. My first one was Pleasant Dreams, and I believe this was the next one uh, for me to get an idea of their 
not their entire career because it doesn't cover everything, but it covers most of the first part. And I think I got it with the intention of maybe, you know, uh, doing something in one of my classes and giving this album to one of my students who, you know, excelled in something or something like that. But I don't know, I think I'm going to keep it. Let's, let's see what happens with this one. But that is the idea, you know, maybe I'll offer it in one of my classes and get my students to listen to great music. Then the next one that I have is another favorite artist of mine that for some reason at one point in my life I kind of stopped following. I, I don't know why, not because I didn't like his music anymore or anything, but I was first of all a fan of Michael Jackson as I have shared with you before. That album Dangerous was really really a very important moment for me. And after that I bought of course History. That was the first CD that I got in my life. But I never got a copy of Blood on the Dance Floor. And they had this at the library. Once again, for 50 cents, I was like, wow, you know, I already knew the new songs. There are five new songs and the others are remixes. And I, I knew that I liked them. So I was like, you know, why not? Now I finally have a copy of this one. So I need to get a copy of Invincible because I'm still missing that one. Then, uh, as I have just told you, what I do for Christmas, for example, is I get that one book, one CD, one DVD. And for my CD, this time I chose the very best of Talk Talk. I did not really know a lot about this band. Of course, I had heard the song It's My Life. And the other one that I knew was Life's What You Make It. And I thought, you know, let's check it out. You know, I like those two songs. I have heard great things about Talk Talk, so why not? And I really, really like this album. Okay, so I'm going to be listen, listening to this one a lot. Another thing I got at the library, this was uh, actually a very nice surprise because this is Blade Runner by Vangelis, his version of the album, not the actual soundtrack album for the movie. So you can find some things here that are not available in that soundtrack to the motion picture. So I thought that was really, really cool and I loved listening to this one. And that same day, I found also an album that my brother had, which was Synchronicity by The Police. Really good stuff right here. Of course, it has uh, Every Breath You Take, it has Synchronicity 1 and 2. Uh, what's the other one that many people... Well, King of Pain is, is quite well known, Wrapped Around Your Finger, T in the Sahara, and many others. There's a really weird song here titled Mother, okay? So listen to that one, it's, it's quite something. My brother has the box, it's a blue box that has all of the police recordings, but I was like, you know, I would really have to have, like to have my own copy uh, of the individual album. Because one thing about that box is that they did not separate the albums. You have the songs, of course, separated into a number of discs. I can't you know, I can't remember if it was four or five, but they're not the individual albums. So I was like, you know, I would really have the actual album if I buy this one. And then I believe, let's see, the last thing I have, yeah, the last thing I have for you in terms of music is something that my brother gave me, which are the complete uh, albums, the studio albums, at least, of The Doors. So I have their first one right here, which is one of my favorite albums ever. If you have seen that video that I did on my top 50 albums, it's included there. Then Strange Days is their second one. Then I have Waiting for the Sun right here. The next one is the one that some people say they do not like. The Soft Parade has some great moments also in it. Then of course, Morrison Hotel. And last but not least, LA Woman. And why? Okay, you're probably wondering, why did your brother give you all of those albums? Is he not a fan of The Doors anymore? He is, okay? The, the thing is, he got a little box that has all of these albums, and I believe some rare tracks and things like that also, that includes everything. So he was like, now I have the remasters in the same type of, you know, remastering. So he gave me the, the other albums that he was not going to be using anymore. So that's the reason why he... Uh, got rid of them and, and you know I ended up winning and getting all of the collection of the Doors albums all of a sudden. So that was the music, now we're gonna look at some movies. This was the movie that I chose for my uh, Christmas present. Okay, so I did the Talk Talk uh, DVD, uh, CD I mean, and L'Argent by Robert Poisson as my movie for, for Christmas. I have seen this movie many times, so it's not like I am not familiar with it. This was Robert Poisson's last movie, 
and I just you know really really fell in love with it the first time that I saw it it was a very powerful experience for me I think this is the movie that actually got me interested in the work of Bresson so I wanted to have a copy and I want to watch it again then I got something that may surprise you I am a big fan of course of Andrei Tarkovsky and the first film that I saw by him was Solyaris I read the novel by Stanislav Lem uh, many, many years later. But I was always wondering, you know, that uh, remake by Soderbergh, right, with George Clooney, I wonder what have they done with the movie, okay? Many people were not happy with this one, but, and I still haven't seen it, okay, so I cannot tell you anything about it. But this was a clearance sale kind of thing at Half Price Books, and I thought, you know, I do really want to check it out, even if it is just to see what they did with the remake and how they approached it. Then at Walmart, one day I was looking at the clearance little thing that they have, and I found this two film collection that brings together Gremlins and Gremlins 2. I could not help it. Okay, I had to get a copy of this. These movies were a big part of my childhood. I still remember seeing them for the first time when I was a little kid. And I was like, I would like to repeat that experience because I think that I have not seen any of those two movies later on as an adult. So that should be an interesting experience. Another film that's going to surprise you. I am also a fan of Kishlovsky, as you know. One of my favorite films by him is Blind Chance. And as you know, that was remade, I guess, you know, they I, I don't think they gave credit to the original movie or anything, but a very similar idea was used in this movie, Sliding Doors. And for many years I told myself, Jorge, you're not going to watch Sliding Doors, okay? You're, you're just not going to do that because you like Kishlovsky and Blind Chance is one of your favorite movies. So you're just not going to do that. Well... It turns out that my mother and my brother, they watch a lot of movies, and they had gotten a copy of this one. They were going to throw it away. And I was like, let me keep it, okay? Let me keep it just to see what it is, and then I'll decide if I want to, you know, make it part of my collection or not. But I decided to keep it, and uh, we're going to see what it's like, because I still have not experienced that. Another film that they got that they were going to get rid of is this collection. It is titled 15 Great Cinema just like that. And it has many different movies that are probably in the public domain or something. For example, The Snows of Kilimanjaro with uh, Gregory Peck. There's that version of Anna Karienina with Vivian Lee. Uh, Connecticut, Connecticut Yankee in, the, in King's, King Arthur's Court. I can't speak today, I'm sorry. Uh, Tale of Two Cities, Jane Eyre with George C. Scott. Legend of the Sea Wolf, Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, The Jungle Book, Call of the Wild. A version of Macbeth with Sean Connery, I have not seen that, and I want to check it out, it's from 1961. Of Human Bondage, Little Men, The Last Time I Saw Paris, David Copperfield, and finally Cyrano the Bergerac. So, sounded interesting, at least I'm interested in a few of those films. I'm, I don't know if I'm going to watch all 15 of them, but some of them I'll definitely check out. Then, for a very long time, I have been wanting to read the novel Vanity Fair. So I don't know when that is going to happen, because that, as you know, is a very long novel. But just in case, I have the movie right here. Now, I, I don't really know when I'm going to be watching this, because as I have said before in some of my videos, I'm the kind of person who needs to read the book before he watches the movie. I have, of course, made some exceptions to that. But uh, with this one, I think I'm going to read the novel first. And as I said, you know, I have no idea when that is going to happen. The next one is The Emperor's Club. This is a movie that my mother gave me, actually. It was one of those movies that she had watched, and I don't know if she is planning to keep it or not, but in any case, she said, look, apparently this is about teaching at some level. And she always gives me movies that she finds interesting that deal with teaching because, you know, for obvious reasons, I, I'm an instructor, so I think she thinks, you know, maybe that's one way that I can get inspired. Uh, and, and look at other approaches to, to teaching, you know. I am interested in movies that deal with teaching, so that is good. Then I have 10 Things I Hate About You. I have heard great things about this movie. I still have not seen it. This is a movie that I'll probably watch with my girlfriend, so I'm looking forward to this one. I understand it has uh, connections with Shakespeare, so I, I really want to, to check it out, and it's a classic, so, you know, there it is. I uh, also got this one at Half Price Books one time. This is a Region 2 DVD, so it's a little bit difficult for me to play, but I have a, I think I have a player that, that has multi-region. This is The Green Room by François Truffaut. 
he is one of my favorite filmmakers. At one point, at least, I called him my favorite filmmaker ever. And I remember watching this movie on VHS a very long time ago, after I had read the story by Henry James that it is based on, The Altar of the Dead. This is one of my favorite films by Truffaut. So I wanted to have a copy. I did not. I was not sure how the Region 2 thing was going to work, but, you know, at least I can use a different player and uh, watch it. I have here a um, movie version, this I also got at the library, of Dr. Zhivago. I have very, very complex feelings about Dr. Zhivago, the, the novel, okay? So um, let, let me share that with you in a different video, okay? So in that video I may talk about the movie also, but I'm happy that I have a copy of that. Then this is number 22 of the Criterion Collection, that is David Lean's Summertime. It's one of those movies that are in the Criterion Collection, but at least I tend to forget that they are there. Uh, I found this at a library sale. I had seen the movie a long time ago, and I really liked it, so I thought, why not? You know, I can add another Criterion DVD to my collection, and that is always good. The next one is, uh, I would say, kind of a Borgesian movie, so if we were looking for a Borges connection in this video, I have not mentioned Borges, you know, but now I did. Uh, this would be a good place to, to bring that up, right? Adaptation. Great, great film. So if you have not seen Adaptation, I highly recommend it. And the last one that I have is one that I found at a different library, but also, you know, 50 cents or one dollar or something like that. And it's a noir that is also kind of a mix with another genre. And I cannot say too much because I don't want to ruin, you know, the, the movie for you. That is Kiss Me Deadly. This was a really, really good surprise for me. I was not expecting it to be that good. I had not really heard a lot about it, even though this one is also part of the Criterion Collection. So, yeah, I mean, I, I really liked it. So if you like noir, check out this one, because it's going to give you everything that you expect from that great genre, but also a little bit more than that. So, highly recommend it. So those are some of the DVDs, some of the C CDs that I got in the past few months or so, and I just wanted to share that with you. Are there any favorites that you have here? Any albums or movies that you have heard and liked or watched and liked? Just let me know. Or any recommendations by, you know, similar artists or similar filmmakers. I'm always happy to hear that. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for stopping by and have a wonderful day.